All right, welcome back. In this video, I want to cover kind of an issue that I've been neglecting. In reality, what's happening is, depending of the road that I'm on, what I'm actually noticing is that my firewall is staying stationary and my cow's moving, or vice versa. So it's kind of this oscillation happening, if you will. And since my actual steering column is bolted to a bar from one end to the cow to my other, I'm noticing that shift when the road gets rough. Now, I can actually see the movement. Therefore, I know that these here are not tight enough. These are actual the feet to your cow that cinch the body on to your firewall. Now, I can't just tighten down those bolts to the actual cow feet because then this happens. So, just as a natural byproduct, in order to fix this issue, I have to reshim the entire so I figured this was a good opportunity to do a video on how to shim your body. In order to start this process, I actually have to remove my seat. It's not that bad, it's just a matter of getting everything ready. One cool thing about this seat, it's actually a glide engineering seat, is that it's actually pretty easy to remove. Just like that, drop the seat belt. And there's really just four bolts that hold this entire seat together to some mounts that I made myself. Now eventually, I do plan on actually modifying this seat to actually sit about two inches lower by actually removing the bottom section of this frame and re-welding in the mounts. But that's for another video. Now you get to see me wrestle with this thing and trying to get it out. Let's see. Let's close it back up. Lean the seat all the way forward as far as I can. It requires a little bit of awkwardness. Don't mind me. Now the seat's out. Now with the seat out, I can go ahead and start loosening up all my body bolts. Now notice that I said loose. Don't take them out all the way. Leave them somewhat threaded in. It's going to make your life easier when it comes back to inserting shims. We're almost done here. I need to remove the floor by removing these screws, disconnecting my emergency brake, and my dimmer switch. Now I already popped this floor out. Now it's just a matter of maneuvering it. Ever so slightly. Ta-da. We're out. All right, floor's gone. Last four bolts. Again, just loosening them. Enough for us to be able to lift the body and start removing shims. Now, I already went ahead and loosened the actual cow feet. I tightened down the firewall itself, um, the firewall feet that is. There is kind of like a belt, whatever you want, a liner between the body, the firewall, and the chassis that could have compressed, so it's not going to hurt anything for me to just kind of double check and make sure that all these things are actually snug. Now, I personally tried searching for videos on how to shim a body before I actually did it, and I wasn't lucky enough to find one. And I feel like that's because it's not really something that you can learn from a video. I'm sure many have tried and struggled to try to explain it, because quite frankly, it's just one of those things that you just need to learn as you go. You need to get a little frustrated with it, right? It's all just trial and error. But that doesn't mean I can't give you a few pointers. So when it comes to body shimming, what you're really trying to accomplish is just a really clean door gap. And this is your main critical one. If this looks good, your bottom one should be ideal. And there's not much control that you really have over your hinge door gap. In order to control that, really it comes down to heating up your actual hinges and tweaking those. It's possible, but very unlikely you're going to probably have to do that. 
Now here's the next thing you want to focus on. Now if all this is set up properly, this back side should not be hitting the actual sheet metal back here. What I like to do is actually pull the handle all the way open. There it is all the way open. Now this is nothing but a through hole, right? I guess not a through hole, but you get my point. So if I were to slowly close this door, you can see that nothing hits. Now if I let go of the handle, you can see that what's hitting here is actually this surface, which I believe is a striker hitting on the actual lock on the door. That's how you're going to get a nice, clean, shutting door. So now that you understand kind of what you're going for is a nice door gap and how all this should function and help you line everything up. Really what I just did is all these were obviously loose. And then I closed the door lightly, not fully shut, just enough to see how this is engaging, how this whole striker system is engaging. And I would tie in a single bolt down and see how that would make a reaction happen, loosen that back up, tie in this one just to kind of learn how the body moves as you tie in different sections. Now again, the overall goal is to have your door gap actually be very close, if not overlapping, with the final adjustment being that foot to bring it back open. So again, as you tie in that final foot, and since your hinges are here, it's gonna make that door swing back out. It's all trial and error. So now that you understand what you're trying to look for and how to do it, here are a few tips. The first one I have for you is to use a little bit longer bolt than what you truly need. About a two inch bolt is a good place to start. And what this allows you to do is to get a little bit of thread engagement into your chassis and it gives you the room to lift up your body and insert your shims. Again, this should go threaded in, lift up the body, and this way your shims have something to kind of catch on. Speaking of shims, all that I'm using is a really cheap assortment from Harbor Freight. They all pretty much do the same. Um, sometimes you don't find them under body shims. These are actually um, like spacers or shims for suspension components to set caster and whatnot. And it's a very basic shim. You're probably only gonna need eighth inch and 16th inch shims. Here are kind of the two thicknesses and they're very basic. Now, when you're shimming your body, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're doing it on a flat surface, of course, and you're not using jack stands underneath your suspension. Any jack stands, or for that matter, any articulation that the suspension has, is has the opportunity to actually flex the chassis, therefore flex your body. So you're going to shim your body, and then you're going to take it off the jack stands, and it's going to tweak itself. So again, make sure that you're working on a flat surface and not under jack stands, or that pretty much the chassis is not under any type of load besides the load of the suspension naturally going up. Another thing I recommend is to make yourself a little diagram of your body and its holes and how many shims you end up using. This comes in handy in multiple ways. One, let's say you slide three shims in there, you go back out to adjust some, you maybe two come out, there were supposed to be three, was there four? This helps you make sure no shims get trapped in spaces you can't see. The other thing it's going to help you on is as you're shimming your entire body, if maybe you want to be able to go a little tighter on those cow feet, and you use plenty of shims along the side, where well, you can take a 32nd shim or a 16th shim all the way along that body and everything should still line up. So do yourself a favor, you won't remember it, so just give yourself a little diagram and start adding tack marks or tally marks on what shim you used and what size they are. Now one common mistake that we all make our first time is that we think the center, you know, right around the seat is the most critical area, and we save the bolts out back for the very end. Again, every single bolt makes a big difference in how your body lines up, ultimately affecting your door gaps. So don't go ahead and shim everything perfect, your door closed all nice. You're gonna come in here, add these bolts, tighten them up, and it's gonna affect those door gaps. So just make sure you're looking into every single bolt, making sure everything is properly shimmed before you call it good. Now, when you're shimming your body, the only piece that you want on, again, is a whole striker assembly. You don't want your rubber kind of stops installed and you don't want your dovetails installed just yet. Just make sure you get this all lined up because these eventually will affect the way your door closed because those need to get adjusted. And your dovetails, you need to make sure your door lines up and your body lines line up before you can work on those. Now, if you're wondering how I'm doing this all on my own, again, those bolts are all loose and I'm just putting 
ever so little pressure on the bottom lip of the body to kind of lift that up and give me enough room to start sliding shims in. All right, a little swing. And it closes. Now, if you know of any videos or maybe any blogs of people teaching you how to shim your body, or maybe you have some quick tips that you've never shared really outside your close friend group, please take the time to comment below. Cali Rod is meant to be a community. And we're supposed to use modern ways to keep our traditional hot rod strong. So by all means, feel free to comment below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.